Merry Meets, I am Phoenix Redfire, and welcome to Learning the Path. In this introductory episode, I am going to talk about the practice of Wicca, uh, the history behind it, and uh, hoping to dispel some myths that most people think about Wicca. So welcome to this journey and I hope uh, that you learned something new and are enlightened to the path. In the medieval times uh, in Europe, uh, the grand religion of the time was German paganism. and. When Christianity started taking hold over the whole world, uh, magical rituals and the like were outlawed and then deemed uh, Satanistic and evil in nature, which is not the case. So when terminology of witch actually took place, they were described as, well, what this image states. The practice of paganism was just simply outlawed and forbidden and kind of locked away in a closet that uh, lasted for a very, very long time. And this was particularly saddening because there were aspects of paganism in various other religions such as Judaism, um, it affected the uh, ancient Romans and, um, and Muslims as well. So starting around the 1880s, early 1900s, there was a resurgence of paganism and witchcraft and uh, it started resonating with individuals and started becoming a practice again and uh, very much in secret. Um, although there were some notable books that arose, um, certain documents, things like that. And it wasn't really until about 1954 when Gerald Gardner kind of developed his own faction of paganism called Wicca. And that embraces uh, the masculine, the feminine uh, world as compared with the sun and the moon and the earth and, uh, and basically uh, the basis of Wicca is that as long as you don't harm anyone, do as you will.
and that's a part of the famous Wiccan Reed. However, before Gardner, there was Cecil Williamson, who uh, was a surveyor of witchcraft and and paganism, and uh, he was a very influential person, and he was sent to investigate Nazis. Uh, he created a, a center for folklore and witchcraft, and uh, he eventually met Gerald Gardner and uh, created uh, a museum out of the center and uh, sold it to Gardner. And since 1960, that museum has flourished to this day. So there have been some milestones for Wicca over the last 40 to 50 years. And uh, 1986, Wicca is confirmed as an actual religion uh, recognized uh, by the United States and considered lawful. In 2007, the pentagram is recognized in the U.S. as a religious symbol. While many Wiccans uh, feel the need to practice in privacy, which is absolutely fine, uh, being that 1986 uh, was the milestone breaking of uh, recognizing Wicca as a religion, uh, many Wiccans came out of the broom closet and uh, were finally able to be free of about discussing and talking about their faith. So growing up my whole life and having Christian influence um, in my life, uh, obviously uh, certain things were ingrained in me that um, that witches were bad creatures and that um, witchcraft was the work of the devil. And um, so, I mean, as most people feel, um, that is the case. And so, about roughly six years ago, I got introduced to Wicca. So at that time in my life, I was all about bringing positivity into the world and trying to influence people with positivity. And an acquaintance of mine um, got a hold of me and basically said, hey, um, I'm a Wiccan and uh, the practice of Wicca is all about uh, celebrating positivity, putting good out into the world, uh, doing no harm to others, and he felt that it was right for me. So I was like, okay, I've known uh, several witches in my time, um, and I was very skeptical about it because of my religious upbringing. Uh, so I did some research. I did a lot of research and I found out, I was like, wow, this really is the path for me. And when I started reading things and, uh, trying to understand it, I felt this sense of peace and calm, uh, whenever I did those things. And all of a sudden, it just felt right. Now, Wicca doesn't denounce Christianity or any other major religion in the world. Uh, we embrace the fact that people had their own spiritual beliefs. Um, it's just difficult because most other spiritual beliefs don't uh, understand Wicca. And uh, hopefully that's going to change in some point. Um, it might be a long way down the road. Uh, however, um, taking on this practice uh, it has been a long journey for me, even to be able to really uh, take part in, in the practices and the arts. So the place of worship for Wicca, uh, for the most part, is a solitary practice, unless you decide to join a coven, which covens are real, um, but they're not what you 
typically think of uh, when it comes to uh, many things that you see in the media or depicted in, you know, TV shows or movies or something like that. Um, it's just a gathering of like-minded souls who come together to practice and um, and put good out into the world. Um, and that's pretty much what it is. Um, males are not called warlocks. They are witches. And when it comes to magic, it's not about things you see on TV or in the movies or, for instance, like Harry Potter. Um, well, intentions are good there and it shows good practices for magic. That's not what it's about. Our practice uh, can contain a place of worship uh, called an altar. And mine is uh, not quite totally put together, but seen behind me. And magic is the practice of invoking love and light from the moon, the sun, or considered the god and goddess, as well as the earth, and pulling together aspects of nature and natural things to, uh, to promote healing, uh, to promote positive energy, uh, to promote goodness in the world and in others. And like I said, as the Wilkin Reed says, any harm none, do as you will. Um, so it's, it's nothing harmful, it's nothing satanic, um, it's nothing evil. Um, it's just a celebration of the earth, the moon, the sun, and putting things together that are natural. And for instance, a potion could very well be a mixture of different herbs and liquids um, combined together and celebrated and either taken directly or given back to the earth. So I think of it as very relatable to karma. You're putting good out into the world, you're getting good back in. So if you were for instance, doing magical rituals uh, with malintent. That's not what the practice is about, so hopefully karma doesn't come back and get you. <laughs> In essence, the supernatural elements of what most people know of magic don't really exist in that form. It's very natural. It doesn't have lights and lasers and um potion well i mean there's potions but that um change your appearance or your luck or your love life um there are certain spells that can affect things um if you do them properly and uh that's basically what it's all about since discovering Wicca, I really haven't had a place to practice until now. Um, in my head, I've gone through, you know, several things that, you know, I'm putting good energy out into the world um, and still promoting positivity and enlightenment. And um, now that my husband and I have moved into this apartment, I have space that I can begin to further my development of Wicca. Uh, there are a couple tools that I'm still missing, but um, there are some that I've had ever since I discovered Wicca. There are several books that I've acquired over time uh, that have helped uh, me kind of learn more about Wicca and witchcraft. Some of these are standards for practically every witch. 
and uh, for instance, this book right here. And I've acquired uh, a grimoire, which is a book of shadows, <laughs> turned from way back when. And um, it's this right here is a guide for 2021. And uh, considering how awful 2020 has been, um, this is going to be a huge guide for me so that things improve and get better with every aspect of life as we know it. Because this year has been absolutely challenging. So in closing, uh, what do I want for this series? Um, I want to enlighten people and show them that witchcraft is not an evil thing. And uh, to give other witches out there maybe a chance to like just watch and comment if they choose to. Um, uh, maybe it's a center for people to learn. Uh, which I hope I can help educate. I'm not going to depict any of my actual uh, rituals, my prayers, um, in completion. Um, I'll have images uh, for sure, but um, I just want to educate, share my experiences and my passion for this faith, and I'm feeling really good about this, <laughs> and I'm excited, uh, very much so. All right, so that is going to be it for this episode of Learning the Path. I hope uh, there are a lot of people that can come along on this journey, and uh, if so, I hope you can learn something. Uh, maybe you can teach me something, and that would be phenomenal as well. So for now... This is Phoenix Redfire signing out with a blessed be to you all.